And grandparents haven't heard this, but everybody else has heard this about two weeks ago. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, every creature was stirring. They'd just seen a mouse. Kyla was screaming to the top of her lungs, for she had just seen the first house... Louder? Kyla was screaming to the top of her lungs, for she had just seen the first house mouse dung. Lenny, who'd been winning the minute to win it, was scrambling for anything to put the mouse in it. Penelope jumped in the stocking, hanging with care, in hopes that the mouse would not find her there. Sybil was battle-ready on top of her bed, while visions of smashed mouses danced in her head. <laughs> Then out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, they sprang from their mouse hunting, mouse catching, to see what was the matter. And what to their wondering eyes would appear, but a miniature sleigh pulled by Soph the reindeer. And there were other deer too, named Abby and Vi, and also Elena, and all of them could fly. With a little old driver so lively and jolly, they knew in a moment, it must be St. Ollie. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Sophie, now Abby, now Vi, and Elena. We've got to get moving. Soon it might rain us. The fog settled in. St. Ollie was worried. Don't know we could make it, despite that we hurried. It was dark now and foggy, and St. Ollie was stuck. There would be no Christmas presents. Oh, what bad luck. Then out in the distance, they saw a red light. It was flying towards them, and it brightened the night. Look, said Sophie and Abby and Vi. See there, echoed Elena as, it looked, as he looked to the sky. Then their hope soared. Could it be? Just maybe? Hooray! Yes, it's him, Lincoln, the red-nosed rain baby. <laughs> and I heard them exclaim as he flew out of, over the house, Merry Christmas, you kids. No step on the mouse. <laughs> And they heard that part before, but here's the new part. And that's where we last ended. You thought we were done, but old grandpa's been cooking up some more Christmas fun. So the story continues. There's more to these tales. So sit back and listen. Grandpa never fails. So off the team flew back to the North Pole, having dropped off a gift in each, to each living soul. Back they flew through the dark of the crisp, silent night. When Abby yelled out, hey, something's not right. I think in the hubbub, we may have forgot to deliver the presents on our very last stop. So if the head reindeer listened to Ab and puzzled her puzzler, maybe they have not left the presents at the very last house. Did they get so distracted because of the mouse? Olena turned pale. Could they have forgotten to not leave the presents? It made her feel rotten. St. Ollie was shocked. He shook and he quivered. Could it be in his sleigh were gifts undelivered? He whipped his head round to check in his sleigh to see the presents not delivered that day. Turn this rig round, he yelled to Link the Rain Baby. Turn it around now, and I don't mean maybe. So Link turned the team, tur turned around the team. They had one last run. There was still work to do. The job was not done. They would stand for no gifts in that house. Oh, they would not stand for no gifts in that house. They would not forget the house with the mouse. Kayla, uh, <laughs> Kyla, wanted a smartphone, but it wastes so much time. Besides, since, si, uh, besides, said St. Ollie, her budget's a dime. Uh, correction, said Lena, it's actually a nickel. Oh, hell, said, well, in that case, said Ollie, we'll give her a pickle. Next, there was Lenny, who did not want toys. According to Sophie, she's way into boys. Uh, huff, Abby, boys just make noise. Boys are noisy and loud. They're crude and they're rude. And after all that, they eat all your food. Trust me, girlfriends, that ain't, uh, that ain't gonna please her. Well, okay then, said Ollie. I'll give her a tweezer. Then Nellie wanted Shopkins, but she already had millions. Yeah, agreed Violet, but I think she wants zillions. Olena said, Tom Toms would be, a uh, would be something new, or maybe she already has quite a few. Well, said Ollie, I think that's enough, but I don't want to give her any old stuff. I know, said Link, 
as he shined his bright nose. How about a tiny brush to clean twists between your toes? <laughs> Excellent, said Ollie. Now what about Sybil? And I don't want to hear that same boring dribble. Think outside the box, something cute, something snappy. I know, said Vi, a hedgehog like Happy. <laughs> but if she had two, she'd love one, one more than the other. Then, then the other would be jealous. Perhaps we had rather choose something else, like a horse or a ring. I know, said Ollie, we'll give her some string. <laughs> so down the chimney he went, placed the gifts beneath the tree, and then he stepped back to see the, uh, from the tree so to see all the wonderful spread, but he had to admit, it seemed that the spread was shy quite a bit. If I'm honest, St. Ollie said to himself, this is not the best showing from the kid's favorite elf. He looked at the pickle, the tweezers, the brush, he looked at the string, then he said in a hush, probably not the best Christmas these girls ever had. He felt disappointed, it made him feel sad. Then he had a good thought, that didn't make him feel bad. The best Christmas presents, he said, will be mom and dad's. So he jumped back in his sleigh, headed, for, headed home to Mrs. Ollie. He was tired of sleeping and was losing his jolly. But I heard him exclaim, though I could barely hear, Merry Christmas, you girls. I'll do better next year. <laughs> the end. Yeah. I thought it was going slow, didn't it? <laughs>